Something is happening above us right now, a silent maneuver in the void that defies every law of celestial movement we know. We are tracking an interstellar visitor, an object that entered our solar system on a path that should have flung it back into the depths of space. But it's not following that path. Multiple observatories working independently are confirming the same impossible data. The object's velocity is dropping, not from friction or natural causes, but in a controlled, sustained manner. The rules of orbital mechanics are not suggestions, they are the fundamental physics governing everything in our cosmos. An object arriving from beyond our star with excess speed should whip around the sun and depart forever. That is the unbreakable rule. Yet, this object is actively breaking that rule. Before we proceed, I need to know where you're witnessing this analysis unfold. Leave a comment with your country. Your perspective is part of this global story. And tell me directly, do you think this is a natural rock or something else? Comment natural or constructed. The data from tracking stations is unequivocal. Over a recent 11-day window, the object's velocity relative to our sun has diminished by nearly 3 kilometers per second. All measurements have margins for error, of course. But when separate facilities across the globe report the same anomaly, the chance of a collective mistake dwindles. The implications of this continued slowdown are mathematically absolute. This interstellar traveler is on course to become a permanent resident of our solar system. Let's examine the numbers. 11 days ago, its velocity beyond solar escape was clocked at 4.2 km 8 days later, it was 3.15 days after that 1.9 current readings place it at just 1.4 kilometer if this trend holds. In roughly 18 days, its excess velocity will hit zero. At that moment, it will no longer have the energy to break free from the sun's gravity. It will be trapped. But the story gets more specific and more consequential for us. The projected orbital path based on this deceleration places its furthest point at about 1.5 times the Earth sun distance and its closest point near 0.9 AU. Since Earth orbits at precisely 1 AU, this new orbit doesn't just pass near us, it intersects our own celestial highway. Even more significant, the orbital period appears designed to create a resonance with Earth. This isn't a one-time flyby, it's a schedule. It would return to our neighborhood again and again, predictably. Now, let's be perfectly scientific. We see the data, we calculate the trajectory, we project the outcome. What we cannot yet see is the cause. There are natural explanations. Solar radiation pressure, outgassing like a comet, gravitational tugs from planets. These must be investigated, but the steady, persistent nature of this braking maneuver raises profound questions. The energy required for such a velocity change is immense. If this is not a passive process, but an active one, we are observing technology that operates on a rates on a level we can scarcely imagine. Let's consider the engineering. The total velocity change needed to go from an escape trajectory to a captured orbit is a reduction about four kilometers per second. To give you scale, the Apollo missions needed about three kilometers per second to break free of Earth and reach the moon. What we are potentially seeing here exceeds that, and it's being applied smoothly over weeks, not in a brief, powerful burst. If this is a propulsion system, its sophistication is generations beyond our own. The timing is also highly suggestive. This apparent deceleration began shortly after the object made its closest approach to our world, passing within 0.885 AU. During the pass, any sensors aboard would have collected a wealth of data on our planet. Our radio emissions, our satellite networks, our city lights, our industrial activity, all of it was on full display. Then, immediately after this reconnaissance pass, the breaking begins. Correlation is not causation, but it invites a powerful hypothesis. The decision to stay was informed by what was just observed. So, what would an external observer conclude about humanity? We are unmistakably a technological species. 
Our electromagnetic signature blankets the planet. We have infrastructure in orbit, but we are also clearly nascent. We live in low Earth orbit, not on other worlds. We are also visibly divided, a civilization of competing nations, not a unified planetary society. From an external viewpoint, this is a fascinating, perhaps critical, stage in a civilization's development. Advanced enough to be interesting, but not yet mature enough to be stable. We are a civilization in adolescence, watched by an unknown parent, or perhaps what was seen caused concern, evidence of nuclear arsenals, environmental stress, and persistent conflict might uh, trigger protocol for monitoring a volatile developing culture. I am not stating this is the case. I am outlining the logical possibilities from the available evidence. The method of propulsion itself is a deep mystery. Our instruments detect no visible exhaust plume, no significant thermal signature consistent with rocket engines, no evidence of expelled mass. Yet the velocity change is real. Whatever is propelling this object uses principles we do not understand or observe in our own technology. That fact alone points to a physics beyond our current grasp. The central question is no longer just what it is doing, but why. Why would an interstellar probe choose to remain in our solar system, specifically near Earth? We can hypothesize based on what we would do. First possibility, an extended science mission. If the goal is to study our system and Earth, a stable orbit provides long-term observation far superior to a fleeting visit. This is exactly what we would do if we found an interesting world around another star. Second hypothesis, establishing a relay. If this object is part of a network, maintaining a position near a discovery of interest allows for continuous data transmission back to its origin. A technological civilization like ours represents a significant find worth long-term monitoring. Third possibility, pre-contact positioning. If future interaction is planned, having an asset already in place provides immediate presence when that moment arrives. This suggests immense patience, a willingness to wait for the right time in our development. Fourth, a more concerning idea, strategic monitoring of a problematic civilization. If an assessment of humanity highlighted our potential for threat, maintaining a close watch would be a prudent precaution. Fifth, and most significant, this could be the initial positioning before a more direct phase of interaction. Establishing a presence is the logical first move before any subsequent actions. The fundamental challenge is that we can measure the what, but we cannot access the why. We are witnessing an entity with superior capability making choices that affect our future, and we have no power to influence those decisions. This powerlessness is the core concern for space agencies around the world, and the situation is about to become far more complex. When this object officially enters a bound orbit, it presents questions we are utterly unprepared to answer. NASA and other global space organizations face a dilemma with no precedent. If this object becomes a permanent orbital presence, it is an uncontrolled entity in our space. It can observe all our activities continuously. Satellite launches, military exercises, communications, everything becomes visible to its sensors. More significantly, it could potentially deploy smaller probes or other assets, and we could do nothing to prevent it. Some propose aggressive communication, blasting powerful radio signals demanding an explanation. But consider the leverage we can ask, but we cannot compel. If it ignores us, we have only highlighted our lack of control. Others suggest a show of force, demonstrating our defensive capabilities. Realistically, a culture capable of interstellar travel is unlikely to be intimidated by our missiles. The technological gap is too vast. International coordination is another layer of complexity. Every space-faring nation is tracking this. National interests create friction. Some may see opportunity for technological gain, while others see only a threat. This mix of fear and ambition makes a unified global response incredibly difficult. The public communication problem 
may be the toughest challenge. How do you tell the world that an object of unknown origin with clearly superior technology has decided to move in next door and that we are powerless to evict it? The current strategy of releasing raw trajectory data without explicit interpretation buys time, but it cannot last. Amateur astronomers are already on the case. Within days, the conclusion will be public knowledge, and that is when our reality will irrevocably shift. Stay with me, because the timeline I'm about to outline shows just how close we are to a new cosmic chapter. Here is the critical urgency. In approximately 18 days, based on current data, this object will reach zero excess velocity. Let me be precise. Zero excess velocity means it is gravitationally bound to our sun. Its hyperbolic path transforms into a closed elliptical orbit that keeps it here. This isn't just any orbit, it's one that repeatedly crosses Earth's orbital path. NASA's simulations across different models and assumptions all converge on the same basic outcome, orbital capture within our vicinity. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory's calculations are not prone to error. If their models point to this, we must take it seriously. So, what does this mean in practical terms? If it stays, we transition from being a solitary civilization to one operating under perpetual observation. Every rocket launch, every new satellite, every technological step we take will be witnessed and cataloged. We will be under constant surveillance in our own backyard. This is psychologically monumental. Humanity has always viewed space as a frontier for our own expansion. The permanent presence of a vastly superior technology redefines that relationship completely. We are not pioneers, we are the observed. Our cosmic isolation is ending, not with a bang, but with a silent orbit. But let's address the fear directly. An advanced civilization with the capability for interstellar travel possesses technology far beyond ours. If their intent was hostile, if we were merely a resource or an obstacle, they would not need to position themselves carefully and watch for months. They would simply act. The caution and apparent responsiveness in their behavior suggest something else entirely. This is how you evaluate a civilization you might want to talk to, not how you approach a target. However, we must be realistic about the questions that will follow its arrival. Will it attempt contact? Will it just watch? Is it a relay that calls others? We don't know. And that not, knowing will breed deep and lasting anxiety. My recommendation, based on careful analysis, is a posture of measured engagement. We should attempt clear, dignified communication, signaling our awareness and intelligence. Simultaneously, we must vastly improve our space situational awareness, track it meticulously, and prepare for any unexpected evolution in the situation. Be open, but not naive. What we may be witnessing is the end of humanity's cosmic solitude. For all of history, we have lived under the assumption that we are alone, the only conscious minds in our quiet corner of the galaxy. If this object stays, that assumption shatters. We will inhabit a solar system that contains the permanent presence of an advanced extrasolar technology. That is a fundamentally different reality. The countdown is active. 18 days until the mathematics resolves. 18 days until we know if we are still alone or if we are sharing our celestial neighborhood. 18 days until a temporary mystery potentially becomes a permanent condition of human existence. We will be watching, calculating, and preparing for the possibility that our first interstellar neighbor has just arrived to stay. And whatever comes next, we must face it with all the wisdom and scientific rigor we can muster. If this analysis resonates with you, please support this channel by liking this video and subscribing to Astro Atlas for continued updates.